Hi guys, as we've seen in other tutorials and videos, building voice pipelines often involves calling cloud APIs for speech to text or text to speech. And if you want to build voice agents that are fully local, you have full control over the data and, and keep your conversation private, you prefer not to use these cloud APIs. But uh, what you would want to is, is to do things on device and process voice commands on device. Uh, for being on device, you need a bunch of a couple of different models to work together seamlessly with high performance. Uh, so we need the speech to text, we need text to speech, and we need the voice turn detection model or at least WAD, and and maybe an eco cancellation model. Um, once you have these models, then you can use an orchestration framework like PipeCat or LiveKit to integrate and se sequence these models. Thankfully, on device recognition and DTS, the technologies are rapidly improving. And one of the most famous examples is Whisper. Uh, Whisper is, is a library, speech-to-text and translation library uh, from OpenAI, which is able to recognize sound in multiple languages, uh, even in noisy environments. And there are faster versions of it and has been heavily optimized for all kinds of devices. Similarly, there are DTS models like Kokoro, uh, which work even on CPU and have high performance and can give you natural sounding voices. So in, in this video, we are going to discuss how to integrate some of these libraries into PipeCat and LiveKit orchestration models. We'll see how the lower level abstractions work and how, how we tie in the output of these models seamlessly with the, with the pipeline abstraction that, that both of these libraries provide. Uh, I have a separate video on these pipeline abstractions, core ideas behind voice pipelines. And in this video, we'll focus on how do you integrate these local models into these abstraction. All right, so I'm going to discuss how, how to add two models. Kokoro, the Kokoro model is a very lightweight text-to-speech model and Moonshine is very lightweight and performant speech-to-text model. So how do we, instead of using the default APIs, YSTT and TTS, how do we incorporate these models in, in our PipeCAD flow? So uh, it's not too complicated, but you have to follow the protocol. So let's look at the code for TTS. This is part of a pull request into PipeCAD. Uh, so I, you import the usual uh, frame data types, and then I'll just jump to the core part of the it's not a big file, but just jump to the core part. So declare a new Kokoro TTS service, which is the TTS service, and two functions in it, where you initialize the model, and then you run TTS, implement the run TTS. Initialization in it is, again, not is very simple. Kokoro, you load the model, initialize the service with the model path. You download the models, keep them local, the model and the voices. Okay, and, and set some, some other parameters. Run TTS is the key function. It takes in an input string, which you want to convert to a voice, and outputs an async uh, sequences of frames. Okay. So, um, again, the core part of, of this is, may I recall we set up the Kokoro model here. And so we generate a stream using the Skokoro model. Uh, yeah, that's a sequence of frames. And for samples in that stream, we convert it into the samples are float 30 root data type, and you convert them into in 16, which can be converted into an audio raw frame. Right? So for every sample that is generated. You convert into audio raw frame and then return them back to the generator. Okay, so before this, you start up with a TTS started frame and end with a TTS stop frame. So that's it. Um, that's how essentially you implement the run TTS function. A key part is to load the model in it and then implement the run TTS function. It generates a sequence of frames. It's pretty simple. Okay, so that's how you can incorporate a new TTS model. How do you use it? It's exactly the same as how you use other TTS models. So 
this is the main function where you set up a pipeline standard pipe cat style and instead of uh, any other like Cartesia TTS service you use set up a Kokoro TTS service and put it in the pipeline and the rest of the pipeline works as it is okay so that that is the TTS similarly moonshine is is an extremely lightweight and powerful STT model is on X uh, trans model has been converted to onyx format also so it, it is it can be run on cpu for example and uh, yeah so how do you incorporate this into the pipe card uh there are uh, this yeah, implement a transcriber class okay and then a moon, moonshine TT, std service uh, the the core work is performed in the transcriber class again you load the model uh you load the tokenizer for it a bunch of parameters and the call function you call model generate uh, with the speech the speech is a, is a speech where waveform is provided as a as a numpy array and the model converts into tokens uh, and these are deco decoded into text it's new integer ids are decoded into text and you return the text that's what the transcriber does the stt service in the init set up the transcriber okay and then you implement this runs stt uh, where you load load happens inside in it load calls the, the transcriber function and you you initialize that and in again the run stt is pretty simple uh, we, we start with uh, converting the float the audio bytes so the it takes audio bytes as input so those bytes are uh, converted from uh, in in 16 to float 32 format and then this audio float is passed to the moonshine transcriber it's run as a separate thread that yields text text is again converted into this transcription cast to this transcription frame which pipecat understands and yield it to the generator so that's it implement a transcriber and then the std service that is enough to incorporate new model so any other new model form a pretty sim similar format to incorporate it again use using moonshine is pretty straightforward this is the main pipeline instead of so where's the pipeline here yeah. in transport input stt and then there's a logger so transport input instead of stt usually use whisper std service or deepgram uh, in this case you can just switch to moon moonshine's std service i just just show you how it was implemented and that that's um, straightforward you don't need to make any changes to the pipeline so that's it i showed how uh, you can add custom models to the pipe pipeline and uh, and now now let's look at how to do this in another framework yeah so that was pipecat implementation of local uh, models and now let's see how, how something similar is implemented in live kit so i found this repository where they implement uh, the tts module for kokoro and uh, let's look through the implementation uh, inherit tts from livekit.agents okay and this tts variable plays the module plays the key role you create a TTS class, model, voice, speed, and other. So the idea is that uh, instead of directly loading the Kokoro model, this implementation uses a fast API a version of Kokoro where the model is loaded behind a fast API server and, and uh, it, is, it is used via REST APIs. So that's what the client is okay 
and uh, so again uh, the, the initialization creates the client using API key base URL and so on and it's a particular async client which doesn't block and uh, there are updates you can update the options if you want to create an Azure client the model is on the uh, on Azure then this uh, this this class would be useful and uh, so this is the class we are interested create cocoa client uh, you have the model name you have the this is this I think it generalizes to any local model that is served from uh, a local REST server and it's pretty simple it just connects with the async client the timeout and there are some limits about max connection keep alive and expiry so that's it that, that's the high level TTS class and uh, there's a synthesize function which is uh, which returns a chunked stream so I will go into the chunk stream which is defined at a later point and uh, so we pass in the TTS module, which is self, input text, connection options, and uh, the client connecting. And that returns a stream of synthesized audio. So the chunk stream module is, is, the, is the main module which generates the audio chunk given a text. Uh, you look at the run function, which is the key. And uh, you know, high level flow is pretty similar. First, create a streaming output from the, the service, the, the REST service. Um, pass in the text and the op model option, voice, so on. That output is in PCM format. We have other format, PCM is the most simplest and doesn't require decoding so it, what returns is a um, sequence of raw audio bytes and uh, we need to split that into frames that are passed to the next layers um, this the the streaming input the raw audio bytes is a linearized input uh, representation of audio so that needs to be converted into a two-dimensional frames uh, frames of particular size uh, for real-time performance so this audio b stream class takes care of converting the raw stream into bytes into frames and this is where it is done for every frame uh, for every byte in the stream uh, it converts in data and then data split down into frames and uh, it's when it's done, then it's sent to the synthesized audio block, which returns sequence of frames. So that, that's that's it. So main uh, transformation that happens is from these bytes byte stream to frames, two uh, D frames, which are then that's very similar to the that and the frame transformer in PipeCat except that we have a little bit lower level api access or abstractions that for example you have this uh even channel send no wait uh, these frames are sent to the event channel of of the chunk stream and this kind of abstraction this was done at a slightly higher level in PipeCat. Otherwise, things are very similar. Um, yeah, and the chunk stream class is, is the key here. So, how is this used? The main class, we go down to... Uh, yeah, let's look at the whole flow. The voice pipeline agent is a bunch of parameters that pass to it. Uh, you don't set up a sequence of uh, a sequence graph of TTS, STT, and so on. You just pass in these parameters. 
Each of these are plugins in LiveKit. So you have the STT plug plugin, which is um, the Whisper, I think. Yeah, with faster Whisper. And the LLM plugin, which is which talks to a local, I think, Olama instance. And uh, then they use, you set up a room where participant joins and then the conversation starts. So you set up the agent uh, with the STT, LLM, TTS, also the function called where the functions which can be called by the agent and uh, there we'll talk about that in another video. And then there's a turn detector. So instead of using only the VAD, this, this implementation uses a turn detector that is inbuilt into uh, it's part of the default library. library. Pipecat also have a, has a turn detector which is separate from the main library and uh, it's a very important essential detector where the human stops speaking and where the agent should start and so on. The default VAD may not be good enough. Yeah, so with this, that agent, we create the agent and, and pass in the room and the participant and start the conversation by agency right so the kokoro client is is instantiated simply as part of the tts model you know, the tts model which just uh, describe kokoro sky endpoint url that's it so uh, you could replace it by any other local tts endpoint so that's it and that's how you can create local uh, private voice-to-voice uh, -voice systems using a sequence of as local stt and tts modules uh, either in pipe cattle or live kit